Today, for this project, we're working on what's normally considered a Duncan Fife. You can usually tell one by the oval hardware, and then two usually has a bow front type drawers, and this one definitely falls in that category. So, this is what we're working on. But this is the piece I had. It did have some scratches and some places I needed to do some patching or veneer. You're seeing bonding boss gray. And then this morning, I went in there with Yankee Blue and just did one coat of Yankee Blue because we're gonna do so many layers on there. I'm okay with it being streaky or thin because we've got other layers of paint to put on it. We are now at this point where we are all set and we have the project ready for the adventure ahead of us. All right, so we're just going to get that paint right on there. And the beauty of this brush is I can work quickly. You know, I, I don't, you don't, you don't want to work slow here because it's a wash. Okay, let it run. I will tell you that there is a one thing you might consider doing if you are to be safe is let the paint that you put on there dry a day because there's a chance because since I painted it earlier this morning that it could actually uh, wet the stress when I run the rag on it. So that's just something to kind of watch out for. So at this point right here, you could leave that. I'm just gonna lightly wipe it off. This is almost the same technique I did on the whitewash piece that I'll, I'll try and post that uh, dresser I'm describing tomorrow, but I do have videos on my YouTube channel about whitewashing. I'm gonna get a different Big Daddy brush. This one doesn't have any. And you can do something like this, and that creates a nice, texture is the wrong word, pattern. So you could do that if you want, and it creates kind of a weathered look. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is bring it back a little. I want it a little bit more. Again, we're experimenting tonight. I've not tried any of this on this piece and with these colors per se. And I think, so that's one option. Option two right now, I'm gonna do is just, I love doing this kind of wipe, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and wipe off more in the middle. I saw, I, I was on Pinterest today. I love Pinterest. And if you aren't following me on Pinterest, you should do that. I'm trying to populate that with a lot of my work. So I'm creating a little bit of a halo in the middle and I'm looking for my misting bottle. And this one, I'm gonna use my misting bottle because I actually do want it to stay wet. And that misting bottle is going to soften what I just did. And you can even come back with the square bottle and give it even more water. And you can see things start to run. And this is where you can, you can choose to do more or less. If it's not lifting enough paint, you probably don't have it wet enough. But I find that the water misting really gives it um, good movement. But you'll learn over time how much you should mist or squirt, if you will. And we're gonna, we're gonna let that set, okay? Again, I'm gonna lift more in the middle. I wanna keep, there's a reason I did the Yankee Blue because I want that to be the primary color, but um, we'll just leave that, okay? All right, we're gonna go back here with the squirt bottle. You do not wanna work on a piece that's gonna just soak up all that paint. And we're gonna go back in there. And I, again, I love how well I can just move that paint fast. Okay. If you if you want a loose, spontaneous, exciting technique, this is um, a way to do it. So I probably in the last two months, I've done two or three pieces where I've gotten more of uh, this kind of finish. So be sure to check those YouTube videos out. 
I did not do them live, but I did make YouTube videos. Um, they just, it's been a lot of fun. And, I've, and I'm putting, and I'll put multiple colors on my tray at the same time. Now keep in mind on this situation, I do need to pull the drawers out because uh, they need, they also need that treatment. But just remember you are on a, you are on the clock. Um, so don't work too slow. And um, all I really hope to do, my number one goal is just to inspire you to try some different things. And number two, to kind of show you how my techniques are gonna to come together. Now, you remember what we did, so I'm gonna give it, um, i tell you what, let's do a, I'm gonna, remember we're trying to keep more of a vignette. I haven't used that word, but I want the middle to be lighter. I want more of the Yankee blue. The interesting thing about this, in the areas that are thin, you're probably gonna see more of the, you're gonna probably even see some bonding boss and that's okay. Okay, so once you did your dabbing, then let your misting bottle soften that and just keep an eye on it. So now I can go back, by the way, and look at the first section. And just evaluate it if you're getting the right look or not. I don't like a lot of heavy runs. Some people, designers might want that. And also after a while, your rag's gonna start building up paint. So you kind of have to discern, determine. I'm gonna put some more paint over here. You probably can see, I'm looking at the camera, you can probably see that the one side's a little bit more, it's a little bit more paint than the other. So just kind of keep an eye on it, adjust to taste, kind of like cooks in the kitchen, I guess. I have about three wet rags in the studio, so I can switch really at any time. I came prepared. Sometimes I'll use a, uh, gloves for this, if I'm using glaze for sure, because I don't like having all the sticky glaze in my hand, on my hands, so. Wait. Move the camera around a little bit for you. What we're not looking for here is any type of perfection. When you're going with layers, perfection probably isn't your end goal. It's, it's just something that you want. So as I dab with the rag, I'm using the misting bottle to just soften those. Here you can see things are starting to run a little bit again. So I'm just gonna do a very light touch. This could be other things like a sponge or paper towel. But again, I'm not stressing over it because I'm gonna cover some of this up. Just get it to where maybe it's not over the top, but there's just a little bit extra. And then you can imagine how you can apply this to something else, whether it's home decor or something else. So, so it's coming out pretty well. You can see there's a bead of water at the bottom. We'll just dab that out. Things are settled down a lot better, but it has that weathered look that we need. Okay, so we're gonna treat the top just like we did Um, the sides. Now I, between coats, I oftentimes will take the sanding sponge and sand, just give a light sand and I've done that after the boss. I've also done it after the Yankee Blue, so. All right, so we're gonna treat this like we did the front, but remember now things aren't running. So you're really just gonna get a more of a streak so I'm just taking paint from one end all the way to the other. Going more for a true white wash as opposed to a um, 
I don't think I'm gonna vignette this as much. Now, of course, option, it's totally optional if you don't even wanna do this. You just wanna leave it solid color. The problem is I'm using so many layers with this project that if I don't uh, bring the top along, then it's not gonna match the rest of the dresser. I could have stained it, but I actually sanded too far. If you've ever been there before and I exposed some of the under the veneer, it happens. I wasn't sure I was staining it anyway. So I went with paint to do that. That's where we're at right now. So what I'll do now is I will tone that back. And the way I'm gonna to tone it back is, is with a rag. Oh, you know what? Yeah, let me do that. I have another big daddy around here. I put it down somewhere. So here I'm just removing excess paint. But notice I'm going all the way across. I wanna keep that horizontal consistent streak. See how I'm going off the sides? That least allows the rag to keep it straight. I did a really great job. Take a look with the rag. See how it's, it's more it's subtle now. Now now's the time to take more off. If you don't, if it's too much, keep wiping. Like, do you like this band on here or not? I'd like to, I'd like to say that any of these steps you really could stop. You have to determine as an artist, how far are you gonna go? Meaning, are you going to the next step? There's enough, there's enough paint on this rag that I'm actually putting some more down that worked out. Okay, I think that works well. Get this here. All right, next we are going to go into this with what I consider a compliment color. And this is burlap. So burlap is a very beautiful, creamy, rich, um, warm tone. Now I'm trying to continue the worn, weathered, comfortable look for this piece. So that's, we're gonna keep going with that. I think I'm gonna try and use the chip brush. And one of the things I like about the chip brush is that it doesn't have as many bristles and they're a little bit more coarse. And I want that coarseness with this technique. Remember we talked about the vignetting. So what I don't want to do is I do, I do not want to put the burlap all over. I want to do it mainly, I want, I want to do it mainly on the edges. So that's my goal right now. So there's multiple ways of adding this color. I'm going to do more of a dry brush. And when I say a dry brush, uh, I'm not dipping it all the way in and I'm not pouring, I'm not coming in with paint that could drip off my brush. And you can see that it has a little bit of that dry brush. So at this point, I'm just, I'm just gonna accentuate dragging that bristles. You see how I'm going at, a, at an angle? This is gonna be uh, one of those things where you're just gonna have to, what I'd like to do is, is I drag the brush along the lip and that kind of puts the paint on the sides of the bristles. Instead of dipping all the way down, just drag it. And so now the paint's going across the sides. So when I lay the brush down, I get more of that. I get more paint doing what I want it to do. And the cool thing about this, and I knew going into this project, this dresser has been dinged and um, pushed and, you know, it's been used. So there's little cracks and things that I'm actually accentuating at this point. And you just need to think about the direction of the brush, the dragging of the paint. You know, go, go in the direction of the piece. Um, I'm not gonna put my brush straight. Let me this way, I'm gonna go this way. So just turn that brush, lay it flat. That's why you want that paint on the sides of the bristles so that you can lay it flat. And just very light pressure, maybe 2%, 5% pressure, and just put some paint on that piece. So this is almost like a cozy weathered effect. We'll just call it that right now, the cozy weathered look. So here in Pensacola, 
got the coast not by, so it almost feels like it's, you know. I'm gonna carefully just slowly change my, I may even go horizontal in just a second, but I'm just filling this out. I'm not gonna go in here. Okay, so just do it in such a way that it's almost like it wore, wore out. Like over time, things just, whatever caused the weathering didn't happen in that area, and that's okay. So at the bottom, go up because you want that first pressure of the brush to be towards the bottom. And, and as I'm coming up, I'm kind of lifting away. All right. So this is a slow and steady, don't rush it. If you need to discharge onto a surface, you can, but. And sometimes you're gonna to put too much down, that's okay. I also will encourage for this technique that you come back with maybe a 220 grit sandpaper and go over everything because that's gonna more authent authenticate, make it more authentic, that's what I'm trying to say, of a worn look. That, that fresh paint you just put on is now worn as well. All right, I'm having a difficult time, I think at this angle, I'm trying to put it on. It's probably because I don't, I, I don't wanna to put too much paint in my brush that it doesn't have streaks. Does that make sense? So I'm having to push a little bit of pressure. So the bottom's gonna have a little bit more paint than the top. Again, that's okay. So that's just a we're talking about you can put as many colors as you want right now we have three right and maybe four if you count the boss and there's there's the bottom it's just a little bit more aggressive back to hate blue same technique but what I would do is as you go lighter use less so there's hate blue on there so just dragging it Drag it on something, whether a tray or your paint. I don't keep the prettiest, I'm gonna discharge some of this. I don't keep the prettiest bottles, I'll admit that, but that just means they're well used. So what I'm doing here is I'm going over the burlap, but just a little bit. This is gonna add just a little bit of touch of highlight. Almost like sand. Just look for little places to hit, hit things. I'll just kind of get a little distressed. Just a little bit of highlight. I consider this a highlight because it's a lighter color. I probably discharged too much. I'm not really putting much down, but you want to be careful. I guarantee you don't want to put a ton of this on there. Some reason, at least I don't. This is a great place to put some of this highlight is on corners and just really hit that. That's going to make those that corner really pop out and the lines of the piece really work great. So that's just another thing to think about is bringing yet another highlight in there. Shading is what you might see people do. They would, they would do with wax. I do with chalk paint. I typically don't use wax. Don't ask me why. I don't know if I have a good reason other than I just don't. <laughs> All right, so notice how I missed it first. I'm just gonna put a bead of chalk paint along the top and we're going to go ahead and do a little bit down this is aging this is me aging the piece this can be done with voodoo gel stain glaze there's multiple ways to do this and i have videos where i've compared all three together but i love chalk paint because i can choose whatever color i want so let me just and so paint supplied missed it again for now let me just use the french tip and what we're doing here is we're just softening that edge. And tell me when I'm done that it doesn't look like I waxed. I can put as much of this paint or as little as paint on there as I want. 
Now keep in mind, I didn't wait for this entire side to dry. So there's a chance that I could be mud mud muddying up some of my colors and I'm taking a chance on that, but that's okay. So can you see the darkening happening? Okay, that's what I'm doing right now. So on my YouTube channel, you're gonna find a section on a playlist called shading. And that's this kind of thing right here that we're talking about. This is shading. And th this allows me to soften that edge. I'm getting rid of any br um, brush marks. Let me use the, th I think this is actually the bell brush. I think I call it the Lapatia. I get them confused. But that's that's a general idea of what I'm trying to talk, what I'm talking about. There's uh, three decorative lines in here. I'll put some in there and then I'll wipe the top, top parts away. Here, Remember we kind of went side to side, up and down. Uh, since the drawers are long, I'm going to go along the width. And you might even put some on the tops. Okay, if you want, go the other direction. But notice how I'm doing less and less as I get to the middle of the drawer. The hardware is typical Duncan Fife ovals and that's They'll polish up, they'll look great, and do some vertical. So this is going to be our model drawer. We want all the drawers to look like this. So light pressure, flat angle. And leave the middle. I haven't just, I just haven't used the the, term, the words for the brush in a long time, so get them mixed up. Good mix of brushes. I know when I started out, I had about two or three. I think I probably rocked the oval small the most, as you can see about that brush. But then you get a mini and get a flat, and you just start being less inhibited or restricted by your brushes depending on the project. And you're gonna need a variety of brushes because home decor might need a size, a buffet might need a different size. So it just depends. You can see how I'm working on the feet. I hope you had a good time learning some different techniques with me, maybe thinking about some of the brushes and paint combinations. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Aaron here in the Bowtie Treasure Studio. Thank you so much. Till next time, y'all take care. We'll see you later. That's the end of the show. Make sure you subscribe and ring the bell before you go. Bye.